G'day guys, welcome back to the round 20 edition of Just The Tips. I'm joined once again by young Drewzy of the Drew Footy Show. If you haven't checked that out, go check out the link in the description. It's just as good. It's just as good. We've got a big round of predictions to give you this week, but as always, we'll go through last week's results. Drewzy, you pipped me at the post once again. Uh, You got six correct tips and I got five correct tips. You had faith in your Freer boys and I didn't. Yeah, well, we had to win at some point, didn't we? Now, we'll go to the overall results. You are 115 correct tips. You're 39th overall. You were aiming for that top 30 finish, so you've kind of risen back up the ranks. I'm Uh, coming for you. I'm going for a top 400 position. (laughs) um, I'm 448 with 102 correct tips, and Dad is uh, four tips behind you. He's on 111 and 132nd overall. The overall uh, winner for the round was Mason's Cox with uh, nine correct tips, which is a really good job. Obviously, he tips Collingwood to be the Eagles and he tipped Carlton to win as well and he tipped Hawthorne so uh, those are the three I think that would have done a lot of people in uh, and a cumulative margin of four so outstanding tipping Mason the overall leader is Ignatius Sim once again uh, for 122 correct tips and a margin of 553 so uh, he's been at the top regularly over the last uh, month or so and the fantasy leader is again Whelan and Dealan Jeremy Whelan with an average of 2060 so well done guys you are killing it Before we get into the video, guys, make sure you go check out the sponsors of the channel, manscaped.com, for all your ball shaving needs. Go to that website, use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word at checkout. You get 20% off their products, and you get free shipping, which is uh, not to be sneezed at. They do a great job of helping us out uh, fund this little project called True Footy, so I'd appreciate if you go check them out. Uh, You'd really be helping the channel as well. Let's get into the video. Let's do it, buddy. All right, so we're going to go through the round uh, as it's chronologically listed. Obviously, things are subject to change. I'm hopeful that this round, uh, the way it's fixed, probably isn't subject to change. But, you know, mm-hmm. anything can happen in this COVID environment. We're going to talk about the Bulldogs versus Essendon at Marvel Stadium. First up, the Dogs battered the Crows, as we talked about on the Drew Footy Show. <laughs> the guess the most notable thing for this, other than Bont having a quiet day with 15 touches, that's a real rarity. Um, Shaki, I thought, did well, and he might be a bit of a fine for the Dogs. Obviously, the, that tall back position is uh, something they haven't quite nailed in there and he's sort of been on the on the fringes of that team for a while yeah. now um, but he had eight marks and five intercepts playing on Tex Walker so that's a bit of a bright spot for the dogs um, on the other hand Essendon had a bit of a finals audition as I like to call it against the Swans at the MCG one of the games of the year um, you had the regular contributors like Merritt Parrish and uh, even Stringer was good with two goals and 19 possessions Laverde also um, did a pretty good job on Buddy kept it to two goals having a bit of an understated year at Verde, uh, but I believe he went off injured late in the game as well, which is unfortunate. The Dogs' recent record against the Dons um, is pretty good. They generally win, and uh, they often win heavy. I remember a few big wins. So how do you rate the Dons' chances? Essendon usually show up against the most sides. They haven't really folded many times this season, so they could make it for an interesting game. And yeah, that midfield, they're, they're going to have a fun time against the Bulldogs because they're both two dominant midfields. Both sides really rack up the ball and they're, they're both good clearance sides. But obviously the Bulldogs are at the top of the ladder and they're going to get the job done, I believe. Is this on Friday night? Uh, at the moment, yes. Yes, I hope so. Shout out the AFL for making last round still work after being kicked out of Queensland, by the way. That was, that was hectic work they would have had to do to, to make it happen. And they did. But uh, this game, I'm going to tip the Bulldogs to win by 27 points. Yes, it sounds like it's going to be a real fun time. I'm similarly tipping the Dogs to win this by 32. The second game we're going to discuss, again at Marvel Stadium at the moment, is Carlton versus the Gold Coast Suns. The Blues had one of their best performances of the year, I would say, uh, beating the Saints by 31 points. Sam Walsh probably entrenching himself into that all Australian midfield at the moment. Three goals and 26 possessions. Arguably one of his best games for the year, if not the best. Mackay kicked five and he just sort of extends his lead further at the Coleman, uh, Coleman race. The Suns, by contrast, running out of steam. 98-point mm. loss against the Demons, who, uh, of course, can punish sides. They've been a little bit out of form, but um, you give them a bit of a sniff, and they will absolutely ream you. Took battled hard, but I think uh, with such a young side, the the passengers were, you know, yeah, th- there was plenty. Fair to say the Blues start this game heavy favourites. Yeah. I think they're pretty on, like, this season they've been on a bit of an equal playing field, these two just- two sides I think their highs have probably been as high as each other and probably their lows as well so I don't think there's much to separate these two sides but Carlton are a little bit more mature than Gold Coast and look Carlton if you want to start to develop as a side you need to be winning these games at home against Gold Coast shouldn't be losing at home to Gold Coast I will tip Carlton this week and I think that they're going to be up for this one I want to tip them to win probably by about 19 points 
I agree with that, and I think I think with the way the, the form lines are trending, I think, and the fact that Carlton generally play well against Gold Coast uh, from the top of my head, I'm going to say they're going to win by 39. The next game of the round is Geelong hosting the Giants at GMHBA Stadium. The Cats uh, sort of dealt with a spirited North Melbourne, playing a bit of decent football at the moment. Um, heavily won the inside 50 count, but the scoreline was only 20 points, so North did fairly well in that sense. Cats trade periods looking better than ever. With uh, you know, we know about Jeremy Cameron, but I think Smith and Higgins have been really good contributors yeah. for them this year. The Giants, on the other hand, uh, had a home game that they sort of lost to Melbourne. Obviously, uh, we keep saying that every week, but it's worth noting um, yeah. this game would be in Sydney, but they had to play it on a neutral venue and got touched up by what I would say is a much better side in Port Adelaide. Davis and Hopper injuries hurt as we touched Ooh. on on the Drew Footy Show. The Giants have beaten the Cats at GMHBA back in 2019. Arguably, that, that was when they were a much better side. Um, but at least the ground isn't scary for them like it is for some clubs. How do you see this game going? Well, the Giants have been winning pretty much every second week, like clockwork. Uh, been very hot and very cold, beating good sides, losing to crap sides. So, you know, it, it wouldn't be unlike GWS to get a shock result here, to be honest. But... Geelong, they're looking red hot. They're looking like they are ready for the finals. They want finals to begin as soon as possible, and they're going to keep crushing these cans on the way until they get there. And yeah, at home, they don't drop any results. The Cats, they'll get this done, I reckon. I've been very impressed with Big Radigalia. He's finally sort of started to fit into this Geelong side where he's sort of looked, uh, I don't know how to say, like sometimes uncoordinated. Like obviously, he's got all the athleticism, but sometimes he just hasn't looked like a footballer. So yeah, I've been impressed with him, how he's fitted in in the last few weeks. But yeah, I'll, I'm going to tip the Cats. Yes, safe tip. I'll tip him to win by 30 points. Yeah, I'll agree with all of that. I don't think there's too much to say. I'd be shocked if the Giants win this. The Cats will win by 33 points. Next up, we're going to head to the MCG for Richmond hosting North Melbourne. Uh, the Tigers fell short in a dour, sort of frustrating contest with the Docks. I think at one point it was two goals, 14, to four goals, 14. Um, like, a lot of missed opportunities in front of goal. Cochin and Prestia did lead the midfield, and Sydney Stack uh, played quite well, I thought, um, at half-back. He's been a welcome sort of re-addition to this side. Uh, North could be happy with only going down by 20 points to Geelong, who can punish teams, but although sometimes they do just coast. They did lose the inside 50s. Uh, pretty considerably, but uh, overall, I think hard to mark North harshly. I think their last patch of about five games has been very solid. Um, so uh, th there's a bit about North. I, th yeah, I think sure. I, I think there's a chance that they win this game. Do you agree with that? Do you think yeah. there's an upset brewing? This is a hard one to tip for me, and I'll never tip the underdog. Like I'll always just go with the safe tip, which has held me in good stead. But I feel like if I tip Richmond and then saw North Melbourne win here, I'd be like, yeah. I can see that come, coming, but I think I will tip Richmond. But uh, yeah, I've been loving watching North Melbourne, how they've developed this year after such a slow start. They've uh, yeah, come into the best form of their season, which is like three wins, one draw and four losses, but that's all right. They're developing nicely. This is a hard... I actually don't know. I feel, my guts tell me North, to be honest, which is crazy to think that North would beat Richmond if you were told that at the start of the season. I'll say Is Richmond by one point. <laughs> really? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. I am going to tip North Melbourne, yeah. and you're going to change your tip, which I wouldn't recommend. Anyway, nah, I'll tip Richmond. Me. Okay, I'm going to say North Melbourne win by 17 points. I've had this feeling, even last week, I did all the my uh, yeah. editions for the rest of the year, I tip North and win this game. I still feel that way. Based on what I've seen this weekend, uh, I don't think Richmond really have the tools to be favourites for this game. So, yeah. North it is. That's 17 fair. points. Next up, we have the showdown between the Adelaide Crows hosting Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval. Uh, the Crows were battered by uh, one of the biggest flag fancies, as we touched on earlier. Uh, the Dogs just gave them a bit of a football lesson. Adelaide is sort of running out of steam. Again, not going to mark them too harshly for that. They had the usual guys like Laird, Keys, and Sloan do well, but as you can expect with the young side against a good team, uh, there was a lot of passengers. Port Adelaide had a good win, uh, you'd say, over GWS, who were certainly capable of beating some good teams this year, um, and they won by 27 points in the end, although I think it was pretty close for a lot of that game. Carl Amon continued his strong season with another goal and 31 touch. Uh, and it was a really crucial win for Port to um, stay ahead of Sydney in that top four race. I, I could see that top four race coming down a percentage. So every game counts. Do the Crows have it in them to take it up to Port in this game? They'll take it up to them for a quarter and a half and then they'll get battered because that's what seems to happen every showdown. Yeah, Carl Amon, been a, a very good breakout star this year who I've been liking to watch as well. Did you see that goal he kicked against Collingwood mm. when he sold two candies and then and the stat from 45? I mean, he's one of the best kicks in the competition, Carl Amon. The and Daniel Busher goal. 
Just candies? Candies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, piece of candy. But yeah, their, their forward line clicked against GWS, so I don't think they're going to have any trouble clicking against Adelaide. But yeah, you know, it's a big game. Exciting times for Adelaide after a somber few weeks. <laughs> Exciting times coming up to a, to a showdown or a, or a derby in our case, but uh, it's going to be heartbreaking, I think, for the Crows. They're going to get battered by Port, I believe, probably by about 41 points. I agree with that. I don't need to analyze it any further. It's been a while since I feel like Adelaide won a showdown. Maybe, yeah. oh, maybe it was like 29. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to say Port Adelaide <laughs> by 59 points. Ooh. Big win. Next up, we have got a bottom four clash that I actually think uh, could be an interesting result. Maybe not an interesting game, but an interesting result. <laughs> You've got Hawthorne hosting Collingwood at uh, Utah Stadium as it's currently fixtured. The Hawks shocked a lot of people by beating Brisbane. Um, they only won by 12 points in the end, but again, uh, the inside 50 count was one-sided. Um, and I think, yeah, like you said, the Lions kicked eight goals to one in the last quarter. So yeah. kind of salvaged what would have been a very, very embarrassing result on paper. The Hawks midfield sort of stepped up. The senior guys like O'Meara, Mitchell and Wingard, they won plenty of the football and kicked goals as well, um, which is a big plus. Very young Magpie side then battered the Eagles by 45 points uh, at the MCG. Absolutely made them look second rate. Um, and I, I don't know if I'm making this stat up, but I think they had 10 players with less than 50 games. So a real turning of the tide for Collingwood. And you can clearly see a change in the way they move the balls. A lot more attacking. Yeah. Something I'm imploring the Eagles to sort of follow suit. Um, and we can see what happened when you, you take the game on a little bit more. Collingwood were fantastic. Dugowie, again, one of the... I mean, they had so many players play well. It's hard to name just one. But Dugowie's kind of con- continuing that uh, midfield... Uh, transition and yeah. I think he barely won the football in the front half of the field so he's generally you know getting back and helping out um, which is an interesting development to see in terms of how he's going to project as a footballer as well so yeah. that's interesting two rebuilding sides in relatively good form in Tasmania who's going to win I think that last point you added in Tasmania has shifted my thoughts to Hawthorne not do Hawthorne win two games in a row you know, that, that's what I think. I feel mm. like a lot of these teams will get a win, get a bit comfortable, and then they're going against the stuff the next week, and then they drop. But Collingwood won last week as well. So I want to hear your tip first. Yeah, I'm inclined to go Hawthorne. So Hawthorne drew with Melbourne, then they lost to Adelaide, and then beat Brisbane. Down in Tasmania for a second week in a row. I'm, I'm inclined to say Hawthorne, yeah. to be honest. So that's my sur- uh, conservative tip at the moment. But it's pretty 50-50. I'm leaning towards Hawthorne, mm. sort of. Well, Collingwood, when do they play in Tasmania? Almost never. Yeah. It doesn't mean they're not good at Tasmania, but it's a lack of uh, exposed form. And Hawthorne got battered by Fremantle in Tasmania this year, so it's not a huge home ground advantage. So yeah. I'm going to say Hawthorne by three points. I think I'll tip Hawthorne. Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. That's a real toughie. I'll go to Hawks by 12. The next game is we're heading back to Marvel Stadium for the clash between St. Kilda and the Sydney Swans. Saints were very disappointing against the Blues. Uh, add that to the list of disappointing performances <laughs> this year. A game they probably should have won, would have started favourites. Um, the midfield worked hard, but again, that's three losses in a row for them, I believe. Uh, the Saints' issues clearly look deeper than personnel. Like, they, they've missed... Uh, they've lost games with you know Ryder and Marshall missing and stuff like that, but they don't really have that excuse anymore. I think I think the issues are a lot deeper than that. For sure. Uh, by contrast, the Swans' hottest team in the comp right now in terms of player looks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, I think they've won all five of the last five games. Beauty contest. Yeah. <laughs> um, and their form lines are you know fantastic, and they just um, won a finals like game uh, against Essendon at the MCG. So uh, not really travelling as such. They're kind of probably just going to be stuck in Melbourne for at least another week or two. Um, but Papley kicked four, four goals last week. Uh, the kids did pretty well, um, you know, in, a, again, finals-like atmosphere. The performances in Melbourne do bode well for the Swans going into finals. This will obviously be in Melbourne. The Saints did get close last time they played yes. in Sydney. Yeah. How do you see this game Yeah, going? that last game I remember watching, that was when St. Kuna were kicking as accurate as a bloody banana. Mm. Wow, that was very that funny. That was lame. That loss of the game was literally just a goal kicking. But St Kilda were all over them. So potential for an upset. The way the season's been going, I've got a tip. The Sydney Swans. No, 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 no. But yeah, I, I will tip Sydney. The tipping seems so... The tipping seems so like one-sided. Like You can pick a favourite in most games this year, but they, they don't come through consistently. There's been so many upsets, it's unreal. Will it happen in this game? Potentially. Because, uh, yeah, the St. Kilda footy is as good as Sydney's, as we saw in that game where they literally just lost due to inaccuracy in front of goal. But I, I think Sydney have risen a couple of levels since that game. Though. Yeah, and that true, because that's when they were going through that mid-season form slump as well. So that's a good point you make, Jesse. Good Thank job. You. You're good at your job. Mm-hmm. Um, Errol Goulden, like, 
has been absolutely outrageous this season as well. Hey, like he, he can't burst onto the scene and then just sort of settled into the Sydney side. But the goals he's kicking for a first year player, that one I saw against Essendon from about 45 out, run out of a pack, snapped it on the left. Massive goal. Yeah, Sydney are looking good. I'll tip him to win this one by 20. Yep, I you know, agree. I don't know. I don't think Sydney will batter them. They certainly could, but I think it's more likely Sydney batter them than it's then it's the Sydney, uh, St Kilda win. So yeah. I'm going to say, yeah, 23-point win to the Swans. The penultimate game of the round is Fremantle hosting the Brisbane Lions at Optus Stadium. Fremantle coming off uh, a low-scoring scrap against the Tigers, but gee, it was an exciting finish. Uh, one of the best finishes to a season all year. I, I was genuinely, it's rare that I'm like screaming at the TV, hoping that Fremantle lose, and it's all because of you, you little shit. Nah. <laughs> you only call me a little shit because your team is shit, so... You don't have me to blame, mate. I'm, no. just, I'm just the, like the the devil in your head, like ah, you suck, you suck, and then you're like, damn you. No, my insults for you are just directly proportionate with how annoying you get. And when the Eagles suck, the more annoying you are. Yeah. It's not when Fremantle are playing well; it's when the Eagles suck. Yeah. Moving on. In all seriousness, so I thought Brayshaw was probably the biggest plus for Fremantle out of this game, other than four points. 39 possessions, eight clearances, two in the dying 30 seconds or something. Um, he's a real leader already, and it's hard to believe he's like 21 or 22 years old. The Lions, you know, they finished hard against the, the Hawks, but that was almost uh, similar to West Coast um, to sort of save embarrassment because that margin could have been a lot worse. Um, but clearly not in uh, really good form at the moment. Lions stood up with 38 touches for the Lions, um, but other than that, it was few and far between for the contributors of Brisbane. Um, real horrible performance. So, uh, with Fremantle needing to win, staying alive to stay alive, how do you see this game going? I see this. I don't know how I see this mm. analysis. Yes. <laughs> Good save. I've always just fancied our chances against Brisbane. Like when we met earlier on in the season, we lost by four goals, but it was literally like one quarter which cost us the whole game and. Brisbane have yeah been chasing tail all year long. Frio at home, I fancy our chances, but it would just be way too good to be true for Frio to win two games against two top four sides from the previous season in a row. Like Frio just don't come out with good results and make me happy. It doesn't work like that because <laughs> at the moment I'm up here and usually I'm down here, so it's usually like a middle ground. That's how sports work. They, they, it's not good. So um, I'm sure the Dockers will find a way to let me down in the next few weeks at some capacity. Do I think it'll be this week? No, I'm actually going to tip the Dockers this week. Hayden Young back in the side. He had a pretty average game against Sydney, but he found his feet against Brisbane. And uh, Brandon Walker, a player that I didn't speak about on the Drew Footy Show, he's growing confidence week on week. That first game he played, I think it was against the Blues. He wouldn't take a bounce, and now he's really taken on players, trying to provide a lot of run and carry off that back half. So, yeah, him and Hayden Young, Nathan Wilson's been playing really well as well. Uh, Luke Ryan was massive in the back line for us as well. Chera, Brayshaw, massive yesterday. Pretty much won the games off their own boots. I love those boys to bits. And Lockie Schultz, my new favourite free player, won the game with pure passion. I love him. But yeah, we, we beat Brisbane a couple years ago when we were just like in the pits of the Ross Lyon era and they were on the rise at home. Pretty all good at home. I'm going to tip the Dockers to win this one. Blind hope. Uh, let's go 17 points, but we'll probably not kick straight and kick ourselves out of the game. How do you see it going, buddy? I think Brisbane is a far tougher opponent than Richmond. Um, I think Fremantle will definitely control the game at Richmond. I was messaging you uh, during the game, and it's hard when you were so emotionally invested in it, but I, I felt like Fremantle were in control. Every time they lost the lead, they just looked like scoring more than yeah, Richmond did. Yeah. But I do think Brisbane, despite their form lapse, a much tougher opponent. On the flip side of that, you guys don't really have any fears against Brisbane. Uh, you play pretty well against them at the Gabba. So this is a 50-50 for me. I think I'm going to look silly. Uh, you will not real. let me forget about it, but I'm going to tip real. Brisbane. Uh, I'm going to tip Brisbane by 11 points. Ooh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm a fucking filthy pig. The final game of the round is a clash of the titans, you could say. The Eagles hosting Melbourne at Optus Stadium on what I believe is going to be Monday night, which is why I've left this game for the last fixture for Saturday. More likely to be Monday. The Eagles obviously... Um, got their noses rubbed in their own shitty jocks against Collingwood. <laughs> um, I was trying to think of a creative way to describe what happened. Uh, we all, we that all know what perfect. happened. <laughs> that was perfect. Um, weirdly, they won the inside 50s, um, but to be honest, I think a lot of that was inflated by bad inside 50s, but also 
uh, late in the game, Collingwood completely stopped playing and we banged on the goals and made it look like it was a closer game than it was. Um, so, yeah, really disappointing and probably not worth mentioning a single player. Other than Hearn hitting 300 games, That's I'm actually really happy for that. That's the first time an Eagles hit that, that um, record. So, unfortunately, we just didn't play well in that game. But uh, coming up against Melbourne, um, in my mind, probably... The, when they're hot, the best team that come, from what I've seen, in my personal opinion. They've obviously been a little bit off that in the last five weeks, but definitely found some confidence against Gold Coast, winning by nearly 100 points. Ben Brown kicked four. I don't really need to make a case for why Melbourne would win this game. They're yeah. such a strong side, and um, with their avenues to goal, uh, it's probably a good week for someone like a Barras to come back in, but um, I don't know if it's going to matter too much. Uh, what, <laughs> what are your predictions for this game? I'm going to tip Melbourne, but I'm also going to say, did you ever hear the phrase, wet toast, before I started saying it? Yes. You did? Yeah. Okay. God. It's not even funny. I, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's not even funny at all. I love seeing the wet toast weasels cry into their bowl of toast. Did you really think you made it up? I, I did. I, I didn't hear it anywhere for some reason. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. Analysis. Yeah, Melbourne looked like they were coming back into form against in that game last week against Gold Coast. Finally clicking on forward cylinders, which is going to make them think... How can we battle the West Coast Eagles this week? Then they do planning, and then they, they make a game plan, and then they go, go! And then I reckon they're going to win analysis. Um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't really noticed how bad West Coast have been doing, because I live in this constant fear that they're going to win the Premiership again, mm-hmm. which is like my worst nightmare. So this season, it's only just dawned on me that you guys actually suck, mm. and it makes me happy. Well, this is the first time we've sucked. Yeah, in, in the a last while. five years. Four yeah. Years, so. It's nice. It's a fresh, breath of fresh air. When 3 won yesterday, I was equally as happy. Like I was like, yes, 3 won and Eagles lost. And that is the mindset of a 3 fan in a nutshell. Yes, and that's why Jesse hates me. <laughs> <laughs> there are other reasons. How's your midfield been going? Mm, poorly. Poorly? Mm. Why? Pff, fuck knows, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I just think the, uh, the playing group looks disinterested and tired. Um, but the midfield is just so hot and cold. Um, yeah. But we didn't really have a single midfield winner. Dom Sheed tried hard. I mean, I think they won the clearances, which is stupid, but um, I wouldn't say they played well. Yeah, okay. So I reckon Petrarca and Oliver and Viney and Brayshaw potentially and Cozzy Pickett give you a bath, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, is there a counter-argument to that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking, yeah, all right. I reckon their midfield stars get on top, play slick football, and if you guys are looking tired, I know Melbourne aren't. Melbourne are up for it. So we've got a lot to play for this season in the Premiership race. Melbourne win in Perth. Go to the Ds. We're going to win by 28 points. Um cautiously wondering what our lowest ever score at Optus is <laughs> because that record could be broken yeah. in the 30s or something like that. I feel like it happened like not too long ago. Oh, was it against the Dogs, 44? Doesn't matter. We're a chance to break it out this week. Melbourne's going to win this by 72 points and then the Eagles will win the Derby. <laughs> 72 points? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Far out. That's bad, bro. It is bad, yeah. Surely Freo beat West Coast like with this form that they're in. It has to happen sometime. Don't know. Maybe. But, yeah, was coming soon. but remember what happened right before the last derby. Yeah, yeah. you got Pablo Geelong. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, guys, that is just the tips for yet another week. Let us know in the comments what you think we got right, what you think we got wrong, uh, what your tips are, and uh, who's going to do better out of us. Because uh, yeah. we went different on one or two. Oh, for, yeah, we went different on Fremantle and uh, the Richmond North Melbourne game. Yeah. So, yeah. It's probably going to be me who gets it wrong. But anyway, guys, <laughs> let us know in the comments what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Go check out the Drew Footy Show on Drewsy's channel. And we'll see you in the next one. I have AIDS.